So what is constructive criticism? Some of, you, some of you people worry a little bit that if you put a video up, everyone's going to attack you. That's what happens on these forums where people with no idea think they have an idea and they will rubbish your videos that you put up on the World Wide Web. What you've got to do is you've got to oversee and not worry about that rubbish and look at the bigger picture. In the group that we've got on Patreon and Corleone Talk, it's a group of like-minded people that are there to help each other and give advice when they know what they're talking about. But you'll get the odd person that will give you advice that's not right. If I see that, I step in and I give further advice. My videos are there for people to learn from, not to rubbish each other's method of training. Anybody is welcome as long as you're not rude to other people. Don't think you're above others. Reach out and help others. That's the way to bring the dog training community together. This little video is a fine example of a 16 week old pup that I've only just come back from Scotland with. And this little pup is going, was, was trained up to turn into a lovely quality working dog in the field. He was quite a soft Labrador. So if you've got a soft pup, this was an ideal video for you to follow and learn because when we were on YouTube, we just kept sticking them up to teach people. So this is Scotty, and Scotty went through the whole program, and then I sold Scotty at two and a half years old, fully trained, and he has a wonderful life in the field. But I gave him a year and a half on the shoots, picking up, but I show you how easy it is to train a Labrador. Now, Spaniels and Cockers can be more demanding and more difficult to train. If you buy a well-bred Labrador from a good, work, a good working line or a good trial line and you know what you're doing or you follow my videos, it's so easy to turn that dog into a wonderful companion in the shooting field or a pet. Simple as that. But why would you want to buy working lines or field trial champion lines just for a pet? So many people get on the bandwagon just for the breeding sake of things. I never bred off Scotty. Could I have bred off him? Yeah. Would I have put him to a soft bitch? No. I wouldn't have put him to a soft bitch, but he came out of himself when he was about 16 months of age and started to real show promise. But at this stage, he's doing nothing wrong and he's just learning the association, the early learning foundation that I was putting into the dog. So this video has now been repeated three times and I'm going to do a voiceover and explain to you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And then you can listen to the whole video in its entirety and give you an idea of what's happening. Hope you enjoy. So like I said, I've just had him two days. So I've taken him out in the backfield. He's been well socialized by the people who had him. Like I say, I didn't pick him up at eight weeks old. I was up in Scotland and I decided to bring a dog back down from Scotland. Now, why did I decide to bring a dog back down from Scotland? Because if I was going to use him for breeding program, um, I, then I have a dog down here that not everybody's got from the breeding lines because he's from up Scotland. And you can get some good dogs up in Scotland, um, where down here, people seem to use the same dogs for stud because they're local. So if they've been successful, there's a lot of those dogs in this area where a dog that is outside the area, different breeding, if he makes the grade and people like him, they'll start to use him. Now, why didn't I use him? Because I had no intention of, of breeding off him. He's not a breeding machine. Um, if I kept him and I used him for stud, that would have been one thing. Did I like the dog? Yes, I did. He was a lovely, lovely natured dog. Wanted to please. Hardly ever fell out with him. Once or twice, I just had to show him. And you didn't want to put too much pressure on him. But what he's doing here, he's making these choices. And one of the videos that was put up to be critiqued last night or the night before for people who didn't come on to Corleone talk but we talked about it yesterday let me just explain uh, it's Richard's video and Richard was holding on to the dog and stroking the dog when the dog brings it in look how fast I take the retrieve off the dog I don't take it off it that quick all the time because Richard's right you've got to leave the, the, the dummy or the ball in the dog's mouth stroke the dog and then take it off it but if you leave it in the dog's mouth and let the dog turn away from you, 
the dog is becoming dominant even at that young age. Look at that doggy, give it me, and I took it off him. I've stroked him, and that's enough. That's enough, see, there you go, stroked him, and now I'm going to go back to the gameplay. So he's getting the praise when he comes in, but what I'm not doing is holding on to him and turning him around and, and, and over fondling him. One minute I do give him a, extra praise, and then the next minute I just take it off him and play the game again. So I'm dropping off the praise, even at this stage at certain times. Watch. In he comes. Stroke, stroke, stroke. Watch. Right. That's to get that bond in close. And then we throw the retreat. But I'm not holding him and I'm not mollycoddling him by pulling him into me all the time. He's got that freedom and that choice whether to come back. So watch, watch again, look. So I'm, I'm guiding him in. Took it off him that time. When he came in, I just stroked him, look, to say, well done. But this drops off as the dog gets older this is just starts at this stage with a young pup to build that confidence watch the ball situation i'm not holding him he's got the freedom to run in i'm showing him the dummy close in teaching him to come in close and the fun will be in close i'm standing up on purpose now i've changed my position on purpose look i'm teasing him with it because i'm looking at his eye contact to see if he's got the concentration. So I stopped and went in there to say, yeah, okay, son, calm down, because it's, it's all new to him. It's all new to him. Right, and I'm moving with him, look, and then all of a sudden, I'll throw it. There you go. Out he goes. Now watch what happens when he brings it back. It's his choice. He's learning for association. The fun is when I bring it back. I get it again. If the, look, straight off him, look. One stroke, two strokes, right, a few strokes, right, and then bang it back out again not holding him in there if you're holding him in he'll start to kick and you're creating barrier frustration it's as simple as that that's what we were talking about last night look in stroke stroke but you're not holding him in i see too many people giving the dog too much praise but i'm not saying you don't give him praise there's a fine example of me giving praise but there's a balance don't overdo it everybody that's the important thing and the more he does it, the more he realises, right, I've got the message now. All i got to do is go out and fetch it, because that's the fun element. The fun element is fetching that dummy, fetching that tennis ball. Look, I'm teasing him with it. Throw it out. There you go. It's his choice. I haven't held on to him and restrained him. Why would you want to restrain him? Well, I want to calm him down. You don't want to calm him down at this stage. You don't want to calm a cocker down at this stage. But, you, but, but the stroking is that couple of seconds to, while it's in with you. That's your calming down period. Then you let the dog go. You give the dog the space to make the choice. And the dog will come back into you because you're not holding on to it. If you're holding on to it, like in Richard's video, eventually the dog will not come in and you'll have a, a gap between you and the dog. So that's a, that's a learning curve for you people to see. There's nothing wrong with giving praise to a young little dog like that when it's done that. But don't overdo it. Don't make a big thing. Of it. Don't be jumping up and down in the air. You make that dog want to jump. Look, there you go. There's the fun element. He's seen the movement and he's gone quite a way out for a young dog. I've dropped to the floor, look, to be at his level, to give him confidence to come in. One minute I'm standing up tall. Look at that, look. Beautiful. Straight off him. And then there's the praise and that's enough praise for that really, right? But we all do it. We all do it with the youngsters because we want to give them reassurance. All I'm saying is don't overdo it. Fine video for you to learn from the association of why we train the way we train hope you enjoyed that everybody if you've got a young pup and you've got one as good as him because of the breeding then you, you're laughing it's easy as long as you follow the sequence i show you it's so easy don't let the dog become your baby so this is the new addition to the corleone family and we don't know what he's going to be like but if you start with good breeding you stand a good chance so we do our best and this is going to be scotty i'm going to call him scott picked him up at the scottish borders and this is one i'll be working youngster i'll be working this summer lucky to the nature he's not soft but he's not overly bold at this stage Good. Lovely delivery. Good boy. Good, good boy. Good lad.
Good lad. Good boy. Right you, tennis ball. Good lad, good boy. Good boy, yes. Good boy. So, is a new pup, 16 weeks old. Picked him up two days ago. Just getting a bomb with him. And just checking him out. Just seeing what he'll do. He's happy to carry it. Bring it in and hold it. Good luck. And getting a bond with him, building a building a bond with him. Get out. <laughs> Got you. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. So, there's Scotty.